was realizing that a lot of things that people buy are band-aids to their like insecurities i know that sounds like i'm like laughing i'm not <laughs> i'm like laughing at myself hey there my handsome and pretty little cobras and welcome back to the cobra's nest for those of you who are new my name is minyon cobra and i make minimalism videos today's video is actually a video request from one of my subscribers and she was asking can i give any maximalist rehab tips <laughs> which i thought was pretty funny because i guess it's kind of like a combination of like the makeup rehab tips that i've been making for these past couple like months and i guess fusing it together with like being a maximalist i used to be a really big maximalist so this video is actually pretty exciting to do so yeah let's just get into this video request so without further ado let's just get into the video let's get it let's go Woo. as usual before we get started a little bit of housekeeping if you wish to help out my channel check out my patreon and if not then just help this video out by giving it a thumbs up a like and a subscribe this video is going to be just kind of briefly talking about how to kind of quit putting value on material stuff i always want to put a disclaimer that minimalism is different for everybody my minimalism journey looked different for me at different stages in my journey and it's going to look different for you in your journey so just take all of this with a grain of salt this all right number one the love of stuff isn't inherently bad. I think like that first point needs to be mentioned. I think that a lot of people within the minimalism community or just there's this myth that like minimalists hate stuff and like I hate having a lot of stuff and whatever. It's not. I think there's just stuff is essentially just a tool and it's however you want to use it to make your life better or worse like if you want to go into debt trying to accumulate material things beyond you know your capability that's totally up to you but yeah loving stuff or appreciating stuff is not something that you can't do as a minimalist so i think first and foremost that needs to be stated even so yeah welcome to minimalism we love stuff too probably just less than when we did when we were maximalists number two you are what you do not what you have that's one of the things that i had struggled with before i guess i transitioned into like more hardcore minimalism i used to love stuff and i used to think that my stuff represented who i was like if i bought luxury stuff that meant like i was like a worthwhile individual and i was awesome and i was valuable <laughs> But it's not actually who you are is actually what you do not really what you have i know that's a little bit hard to like wrap your mind around but to kind of give you an example you are a kind person because you help others you're not a kind person because what can you buy that could make you kind i don't even know but like there's an example like what are you gonna buy that makes you kind i guess you could buy food and like give it to people who are in need but that's like doing something that's not really like you have it like so you keep it for yourself i can't think of anything i think honestly i think you guys could better think of examples in your own life where you bought something and thinking that that made you something when in all reality the things that you do make you you so instead of accumulating material stuff you might as well spend your money on doing things because that's going to better enrich your life than accumulating material possessions number three finding value outside of stuff whether this be finding value in yourself or stop putting so much value on material things or f discovering things that are not just materialistic but i guess more abstract things like helping others investing in yourself taking care of your health reading you know things that are outside of the realm of material things these are the things that are going to enrich your life one that i can think of for myself when i used to be a big maximalist i used to have like a wish list that was like really long with things that i needed to buy or wanted to buy and i felt that i was only somehow going to be fulfilled once i completed this list but i mean like how many lists did i go through of wish lists did i ever finish a list and think you know what like yes finally i'm satisfied no more wish lists no i came up with more wish lists and more and new shiny things to collect and i just never really felt satisfied and again there's nothing wrong with chasing material things like i honestly think we're going to chase things till we die because life is just a series of events so i don't really mean to villainify collecting things i think that is a beautiful thing in itself it's like it's an art it's an it's an enjoyment of life and i'm not here to demonize that but i just think that we should live a more balanced life and maybe find more things like if you find yourself really empty in your material possessions and you're wondering was like what more is there to like than just, you know this rat race you can find value in uh, doing things and finding value outside of your material possessions whatever that may be for you so i guess for myself was uh, creating these youtube videos that was one of the very first things that i created or did that was non-materialistic and was actually really fun because doing youtube was just essentially doing i wasn't i didn't have anything tangible to like rub between my fingers after i would make a video like it just existed in the ether existed on the internet i mean yeah technically i guess it is a thing it's a video but it's not something that like it's in my room and i can look at it and be like yes 
<laughs> this material thing <laughs> brings me joy. Number four, being intentional about what you own. That's one of the things that I probably would recommend to somebody starting off in their journey in terms of like transitioning from being like a maximalist to a minimalist is probably one of the, the key cornerstones of being a minimalist is being intentional about what you own. So it's not that you can't own anything, which I mean is fine, you can do that too, but it's the idea that what you do decide to own is something that you've given like a lot of thought and you think, you know what, this is worthwhile and this adds value to my life. So you really shouldn't feel guilty about the things that you own and you really shouldn't feel guilty if it's not considered minimalistic you know just because everybody else in the minimalism community shuns brand names doesn't mean that you can't be a brand whore if you feel like that really enriches your life then uh go for it am i a bad minimalist <laughs> all right number five better one good thing than two mediocre things i think that's one of the things about minimalism is just kind of like curating your life both abstract and materialistic is just kind of calling down and having a bit more quality or the few things that you do own having more quality than say like bunch of mediocre things that was actually one of the things i didn't really understand as a kid when i was a lot younger i would say like in my late teens early 20s i thought more was more and i just love to collect and accumulate stuff like i was i was a hoarder i used to accumulate a lot of things because i just felt like more was different and exciting fun and honestly i think there's a place and a time for all of these things but it creates a lot of clutter and if you're feeling kind of like anxious in your clutter i think another way to kind of like look at things is maybe use your money in a different way where you could think you know what instead of buying a lot of small cheap things like five dollars here five dollars there maybe you might invest in something that might be like 20 30 dollars and you just have like the one item that i think would probably bring you a lot more satisfaction it's a lot more durable it's a lot more i don't know just like satisfying in general of course i'm not saying that material things need to be uh, expensive in order to be good that's definitely not the case but it's just finding the happy medium of like what serves you in terms of like your money and your values of what is considered better than maybe feeling like i'm gonna buy two things that are mediocre when maybe you could just pull the money together and get a little bit better for one item number six find doing hobbies i have mentioned this in some of my videos and like my early 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 videos like when i first started my minimalism journey one of the key things that i made like a transition from was stopping the shopping habit or hobby as like my main core raison d'etre and finding things to do that were doing that didn't result in like accumulating a product that was like really difficult for me like i hated the idea of doing something that didn't produce a final product <laughs> like why would i go bike riding like why would i read a book like you don't get anything out of it at the end of it but the thing that i had to kind of realize in the end was that you do these things for the sake of them like they themselves are the enriching experience i know that sounds so stupid but for me when i was younger that was extremely difficult for me to kind of grasp who wants to go like hiking like who wants to ride a bike like i'd rather be at the mall drinking starbucks and accumulating more shirts and, and, and pants I, if you're kind of wanting to veer away from a maximalist lifestyle is to kind of transition to creating or doing hobbies that do things then accumulating things number seven enjoy the moment i think this one is more philosophical than really maximalist per se but i think that when i used to live a maximalist lifestyle i was always hung up on the next item that i need to accumulate or the next best thing and it was just a really unfulfilling way to live my life i was constantly thinking about the next thing that i wanted to do when i should have taken a moment to just pause and enjoy the moment i'm not saying you need to be enjoying the moment all the time or constantly be present i'm not saying that either but if you never stop and pause and enjoy your life i think sometimes taking a moment to just kind of savor the moment would be a really good thing to implement in your life like if you decide you know what like i still love my material stuff and nobody gonna tell me what to do i still want 20 pairs of shoes that's fine that's great i think that enjoying your 20 pairs of shoes would be a good change of pace and thinking you know what i need 21 pair of shoes number eight chasing the next high we all have a void and everybody fills their void in different ways some people fill in their void with like hard things like drugs other people with like softer stuff like addictions to i don't even know food attachment issues our friends our family our career our social media like there's a lot of addictions out there uh, if you guys have watched any of these help self-help videos on youtube you know exactly what i'm talking about but what I would suggest if you're considering a minimalistic lifestyle is to kind of take a break from chasing the next high reducing your addictions and kind of trying to clear out your palate it's easier said than done and it doesn't happen overnight you know what 
throw your phone out the window, stop going on social media. <laughs> I'm not telling people what to do or how to live their lives, but it's just the suggestion that perhaps if you want to consider a more minimalistic lifestyle, some of the things that I've noticed within the minimalism communities, a lot of people start to kind of examine their addictions and realize, you know what, maybe I don't need to be addicted to this and I don't need to be addicted to that. When I was a materialistic person, I was addicted to accumulating material shit like clothes, makeup, bags, wallets, whatever. <laughs> my sense of ego stemmed from that so you just gotta figure out like what what's the thing that you're chasing what's the next tie and i don't know maybe like work on that all right number nine realizing that it's a band-aid one of the things that i kind of noticed among maximalists and this is only because i did it was realizing that a lot of things that people buy are band-aids to their like insecurities i know that sounds like i'm like laughing i'm not i'm like laughing at myself and the things that i used to do so let me give you an example so before i lost the weight like i lost like i wanted to reach 100 pounds and I used to feel very insecure, that I used to be fat, and I used to be made fun of and bullied for being fat. So the things that I used to buy that were band-aids for the things that like hurt me, I used to buy extra small clothes and I would like try to squeeze myself into it and it was just like the most uncomfortable clothes. Like it used to just like hurt me here in my underarm and like in my like shaft me, like in my like legs and my underwear would like cut my butt and like I think literally the only thing I ever properly bought that was my size was like my bra, but that's because I got fitted at like the bra store. But other than that, I bought everything that I could in an extra small, I would. And it was just an awful way to live and I really didn't like it. But I accepted this reality because I felt like if I law manifested certain aesthetics in terms of like an extra small, I'd be happy. But that didn't solve the problem. It wasn't until I lost the weight and I became like the figure that I wanted that I felt I no longer needed those things as a band-aid. I stopped buying extra small clothes that I just I absolutely hated. Once I lost the weight, I realized I'm a worthwhile person whether I or not if I'm fat or if I'm thin or if I'm an extra small or if I'm a medium or a large and so now I, I love my body and I wear like really baggy clothes because I feel like my body is mine and I love myself and I'm never gonna torture myself like that ever again so I wear like comfy clothes so what I'm trying to say is I've just kind of noticed that in like in terms of like a maximalist lifestyle people tend to buy a lot of what they think is gonna be a band-aid for their insecurities and I'm not here saying all things that you buy are band-aids for your insecurities but it's worth taking a look at all right number 10 understand what the addiction represents so this kind of ties in a little bit with the previous point that like the things that we buy are band-aids for our insecurities another thing to also look at is that a lot of our addictions represent deeper pains inside of us so it's kind of realizing that some of the things that we buy are compensations for things that we're insecure about or have like deeper meanings maybe not really insecurities like maybe for example there's a period of time where i was like really obsessed with collecting phone cases because i actually have no idea why i was so obsessed with with collecting phone cases i think i was just like really stressed out in my life uh, i was studying all the time and i felt like the only sense of joy that i got was when i went to pmall to collect phone cases for me i felt like i was just not stressing about university and not stressing about med school so like that was like my joy and when i was in med school minimalism was my crutch i was obsessed with decluttering i was obsessed with reading anything and everything i could get my hands on minimalism because i had a void inside because i my career it, it's a tough career and i felt really like empty so i would like fill in the void with minimalism it's funny you can you too can use minimalism to fill a void and i no longer do that i'm really indifferent to minimalism to be honest i know i've made a channel about it but in all actuality i don't really care for minimalism if you guys have watched my like closet video i think i probably have more than what most people would consider minimalistic but sometimes you just need to go down the rabbit hole and realize what are the things that you're doing the things that you're buying what do they really represent for you and that is at the core of where i think maximalism um, it's a good thing because the things that you're doing just representations of what's in your heart and what's in your mind okay this video is super philosophical and a little bit too long thanks so much for having taken the time to watch this video and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching bye